Hi, everybody, and welcome to week number three mm -hmm. of our Write the Word online viral study. I cannot believe it. Three weeks goes by so fast. It really does. We knew it would, but we are already starting to see how writing the word just over the past two weeks can really make a difference. It can kind of slow you down, yes. get you centered. So true. This journal, I already knew it was because I've I know. experienced it before. You guys know that by now. <laughs> But um, hopefully you're experiencing the same thing. I'm Melissa Taylor. We've been friends for a while. It's great to be back with you. And I'm joined here with two more of our friends, Laura Casey and Kendra Schwartz. That's right. Hey, everyone. We're so excited to join you for our third and final week of study. Three weeks goes by very fast, yes, like you does. said. It's wild. But Laura, I wanted to talk a little bit about something that's in this journal that you put in a lot of the products that you guys mm -hmm. do there, the Cultivate team. And that's on page six and seven, if you have a journal, and page number eight. And it's all about looking back at what this year has held and then looking forward at what's to come. And so I wanted for you to talk a little bit about why that is important for us to do. Yes, the short answer is that we forget. <laughs> we really forget God's miracles in our lives, especially in a year like this, right? right? It's very easy to do. And we forget all the good he's done and the faith that he's given us to be able to share the gospel with other people too. We just forget. And so we need to intentionally remember. And that's why we look back and we look forward. And I think about in 1 Samuel, uh, we learned that God helped his people to win a really great victory, right? My son is five years old and he's really into the story. He likes all of the heroes. <laughs> but in order to, to commemorate this, Samuel took a stone and he set it up between two places and he named it Ebenezer. We think of that great song, um, Here I Raise My Ebenezer as part of the lyrics. And that's what that is. It is supposed to be a way for us to remember God's faithfulness. Ebenezer means stone of help. So something I did in our home recently is I made what I call an Ebenezer wall <laughs> because, you know, our, all of the family members in my home, um, we can have times of complaining. Uh, not just if you have three children like me, but I think I also can have a grumbling heart. And I really needed a way to just be able to look up at a wall and see God's faithfulness. So I have some photographs up there and they're not really the most beautiful photographs or, you know, photos that you'd see in a magazine or something like that. They're photos that are moments that help me remember God intersecting with my life. So um, each of our children's births, um, a family photo, just all of us together in a time where we all felt strong and connected. I have a photo up there of uh, my youngest daughter's birth mom uh, and just remembering her selflessness in our adoption helps me to remember, oh yeah, even in an year like this, yes, God right. is faithful. Right. It's good. I so easily forget. So easily. And that you just led right into what I wanted to say mm -hmm. in response to you, because when I look at questions like that, and I've used your more than just the journal out of all of your products. And when I look at it, I think, oh, I don't know if I want to go there. Right. That's mental energy. Yeah. It's making me think. <laughs> but when you do, when you stop to reflect is exactly like what you said. You remember God's faithfulness mm -hmm. and you will forget because life gets crazy. crazy. It just does. And you know, none of us expected, I asked you guys today, I said, so did your plans prevail in 2020? <laughs> I did not, no. you know, <laughs> it didn't. And so when, when I filled out that section about mm -hmm. reflecting on what was, but then also looking ahead with hope and anticipation, I was reminded of things that I'm grateful for that I don't think I would have thought of if I hadn't taken the time to just sit with God mm -hmm. and pen and paper yeah. and, and really go there. So, okay, Laura, you mentioned, you know, here we are getting ready for Christmas. Thanksgiving is past. It's typically a busy time of year. It looks different this yeah. year for a lot of people in different ways. I'm not even going to name all the different ways, right. <laughs> but it does. And it can bring some anxiety. It can bring a little like you know, this Christmas, maybe all our traditions aren't going to work out right. or, you know, but we've been focusing on worship for the past two weeks. And just because this is week three, we still have journal left. Okay. We do. That's yes. true. Yeah. So we want to keep doing that, but how do we keep a posture of worship, especially after this online Bible study ends mm -hmm. and going into the holidays, how do we keep this posture of worship? 
Yeah, you know, I think about, especially at a time like this, where we're not just in the middle of a holiday season, but we're starting to look at the future. You know, dreaming is an exercise in faith. And I think especially right here, right where we are right now, I think a lot of us are feeling like, I don't want to dream. I don't know what's going to happen next year. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. And so like you said, Melissa, we feel stuck. We feel like, how can... I don't want to do this. I don't want to reflect. I don't want to remember the hard things. I don't want to look forward to the good things. But again, when we remember, it kind of unlocks this amazing treasure chest of things that God has done for us. We forget. And then dreaming really is an exercise in faith to look forward. But right now is also a, a, a sticky season. Because like you said, there are things that are different that, um, that are making us a little nostalgic, that might be making us really sad right now. Maybe we're not able to visit family, whatever it may be. So three things come to mind as we move through this holiday season and we prepare ourselves to, to, for the new year. Uh, number one is you have to think about the big picture, especially in a time like this, where it can be so easy to be in that narrow, oh my goodness, I have to make cookies for 15,000 people and I'm not gonna be able to get all my Christmas presents done this year, or maybe finances are really difficult this year. And that's gonna be you know, the norm for so many people. Uh, you have to think about the big picture, that this will not last forever. God made us for seasons. Look to where you wanna be when you're say 80 or 90 or 100 years old. And then what can you do about it today? So my best advice in this season is to choose just one thing based on where you wanna be in the big picture that you're gonna cultivate in this season. Just one thing. Now I know everyone's thinking to themselves, I have like 800 things actually, and you should see my to-do list. My gift list is still like a mile long. Um, but if you were to just focus on one thing, maybe it's one way to worship or one scripture to focus on or one word to focus on, you can use that as an anchor to always come back to what matters most and to be able to just rest and make life a little bit easier and simpler in a time when we really need it. That's so good. I like what you said, just focus on one thing, one thing. and it's like an anchor. It's something yeah. like Ebenezer wall. You can look up and recenter yourself right. and refocus right. yourself. Right. And one thing is doable and manageable. Yeah. It's not overwhelming. It's a breath of fresh air. It it's is. like, I yeah. can do one yes. thing. That's yes. awesome. I can do it. So that's really good, Laura. Thank you so much for that. And so as we wrap up um, our third week of study, it's been so much fun to be with you, but is there anything that you want to tell our OBSers as they go into the third and final week of our Write the Word online Bible study. Yeah, you know, um, my kids and I have been collecting nature. We've been collecting leaves and acorns, and I have this little acorn here. And there is a tree in South Carolina that maybe some people have been to. It's called the Angel Oak Tree. It is so big. I think it's wingspan, if you will. It's like 150 feet from one end to the other. And I think our faith is a lot like that. We want faith as big and as strong as that oak tree, but where did it all start? Just this one little acorn. One little acorn planted in the ground grew little by little over time into that really majestic tree. And it's the same with our faith. One word written in your journal today, one um, Bible verse focused on during the week. God's word is living and active and we need to just let it do its thing. <laughs> Sometimes we feel like quantity is better than quality. And yes, God wants us to know all of him. He wants us to read his word. He wants us to know every facet of him, but mostly because he loves us. And he loves us enough to let us, little by little, let the word be planted in our hearts. And then hopefully over time, it grows into something equally as majestic for other people to see. That's a beautiful picture. That is such a beautiful picture. And Laura, you got me just as excited for week three as I was. <laughs> I'm excited too. I'm so excited to yeah. keep doing this yeah. day after day. That's great. One That's, little mm -hmm. acorn can yeah. make, make a huge tree, make your faith even stronger. Yeah. Good. yeah, that was good. Well, you guys, we're going to have another great yeah. week. Okay. So keep going. And, and like I said earlier, the journal will keep going once this study yes. ends, okay? There's still pages, okay, so after the study. So please, we're trying to develop this daily habit of writing God's word, and um, you, we're already learning what it can do to cultivate within our hearts and our lives. So keep going, but this is going to be a great week. It is. We're going to finish strong. Thanks for joining us, and just remember, as we write the word, you guys know it's the truth. Yes. That God's word is the truth. And when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. Bye, everybody.